as the real estate investor, like what could happen, right? So what we're talking about today is what types of liens like survive a tax deed auction? Like after you issue the deed and you're successful in acquiring the tax deed, what do you have to look out for? Hmm, good question, right? So in this, t this tax deed Tuesday, we're going to be talking about those things, okay? So when you're issued the deed, and if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my phone because I got my notes here. When you're issued the tax deed itself, like it's a real deed, like you own it, own it. It's yours, yours, like for real, for real. It's yours, yours, right? You, it's recorded in the county um, clerk's office and you are the deeded title owner of that property, right? How cool is that? That's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful news. The challenge is, is that even though you're the deeded owner, what you don't receive is marketable title, right? You don't get like any title insurance or anything like that when it comes on to your tax deed. And there's a good reason for that, right? Because when the county forecloses on the previous property owner, due to delinquent real estate taxes, it kind of breaks the chain of title. That's what they call breaking the chain of title. So that's the reason why it doesn't come with any title insurance, okay? So FYI, just so you know. So what kind of liens can survive or may survive the tax deed sale? Well, there's a couple of them, but they all fall into the same category, all right? So there's a couple of them that may survive the tax deed sale. However, they all are lumped into the same category, all right? So here we go. The answer is government liens. You'd be like, okay, but what does that mean, Jackie? Oh my God. What do you mean by government liens? I'll tell you what it means. <laughs> I'll tell you what it means. So the tax lien itself is considered like a government lien, by the way. That lien is placed onto the property because the property owner did not pay their taxes and somebody else invested in um, paying their taxes on their behalf, right? So a lien was placed on their property, which gives like first lien position. But I'm not talking about the actual tax lien itself, okay? We, we've already kind of discussed that one. We beat that one with a dead horse. So if you are the tax deed, successful tax deed owner, what are the other types of government liens that may survive the auction that you got to like watch out for, okay? So number one, federal liens. Mm -hmm. Yep, federal liens. Okay, well, what falls under the category of federal liens? Like, what are we talking about? It could be an IRS lien, an IRS lien. Like, you know, people that, you know, having some challenges paying their uh, taxes, mm -hmm. not only their property taxes, but their income taxes. And then the IRS has like a levy and puts a lien on their property or their assets because they have a deficiency um, liability with their um, income taxes, right? So at the federal level, that's one entity um, the Internal Revenue Service, um, those types of liens. If indeed the previous property owner has a lien like that, it may survive the sale. It's not your lien, FYI. You don't owe the Internal Revenue Service. At least I hope you don't. <laughs> you don't have any challenges like that. I'm just saying that it may survive the tax deed sale, all right? So the next level is the state level, right? The state that the property is located in, right? So states normally have like um, revenue taxes, right? So have you ever heard of people paying like their state um, income tax or their state revenue tax or sales tax? Like if that property owner owned a business and they did not file their state revenue um, returns, that could possibly end up um, converting into a lien for that individual. All right, that's just one way. Another state level um, obligation, financial obligation that could transfer onto a property owner's property even after a tax deed is issued to an investor is um, like, for example, if there's um, the person owed child support, right? The state is the one that enforces the child support, right? So if that individual, the property owner has assets and they haven't paid their child support, that could turn into an actual lien that can cloud that title as well. Another one is um, if the individual, the taxpayer, they had like, um, let me see, another example would be if they had any legal um, challenges, like any court costs where they were 
court-appointed attorney or court-appointed representative in any way. There's like court costs, right? So even like your, you know, traffic tickets, all that stuff is like, you know, it's kind of like a state level, right? So all of those things can add up and it could possibly, if they exist, be a lien that may survive the tax deed sale. All right. So level number three, all in the same category of government liens is actually a county lien. All right. So the county that the property is located in. So what, here's an example of like a, a, a typical like county lien, right? So you may have a special assessment or some kind of out of compliance that that property owner may have um, experienced for their property. Normally it's like a code enforcement lien, like a county code enforcement lien. So I don't know if you are familiar, but the, every county has a department for code enforcement. And those are the code enforcement officers that drive around different neighborhoods and they make sure that the community stays in compliance with the ordinance of that county. So they'll pick up your bandit signs. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about, your yard signs that are not supposed to be there. Yeah, that's code enforcement. <laughs> but what they also do, you guys, is like if a property owner has like, um, excessive debris that could be considered hazardous for the community and the environment everyone that's around it they will give them a citation like a ticket and they have to actually pay this ticket so if they don't pay the citation or fix the problem it can turn into a lien right a deficiency where the um, code enforcement board is going to um, vote that they're going to apply a lien until the problem is actually resolved and the lien is actually on the property. So typical code enforcement types of liens would be like, um, like mowing your grass. And it's not just like regular mowing your grass. Like the grass is as tall as you are grass. It's like that kind of grass. <laughs> like for real, for real. Like you haven't mowed your lawn in over a year and the grass is like, all the way to the top of like the window <laughs> of that property. That's a problem. <laughs> so that would be a perfect example of a code enforcement infraction for that community, right? For that, for that county. Also old cars and junk, you know, like rotting metal, you know, on the um, front lawn. That's a sure sign to attract code enforcement to your property, okay? So you want to make sure that you keep your, your property clean and you want to also keep it within compliance of um, that county so you can avoid having a code enforcement lien on your property, right? So what we're talking about today is what types of liens actually survive a tax fee sale. So it is government liens and there's four different levels of government liens. So the first one we just talked about is um, the federal level. Normally it's an IRS lien as an example. That's like a federal agency that can enforce a lien on a property owner's property. The second level Level is um, at the state level, right? Child support, um, court cases, um, re state revenue, um, fees that were unpaid, right? The state can enforce a lien on your property as well too. Um, the third level, we just finished talking about that, is at the county level, right? Where you have a code enforcement lien. And then the fourth level is the municipality level, like the city level, right? So you'd be like, okay, Jackie, like what does that mean though? So in some cities, right? You have like utilities, right? Like every city, <laughs> you have a utility. You have some kind of utility um, company that um, provides either water or sewer or some trash removal or whatever that looks like, right? So the residents of that community, they, they pay into that system to be able to have those services come to their property, right? So if there's ever a time like a property owner doesn't pay their water bill or they don't pay like their sewer, their trash or so on, that also could be become a lien on the property, right? So those are the types of liens or examples. That's not like all like encompassing, but those are examples of liens that could attach to the property and exist, may survive, may survive the tax deed sale, right? So what happens if you buy a property that has those types of liens on it? Well, don't fear, number one. We never purchase any properties like blindly and just like, oh, I'm gonna research it like after the fact. We do all of our research and our due diligence before the auction, <laughs> way in advance. 
So we know what types of liens may risk or have the high probability of actually being on the, the title even after being after we are the successful tax deed owner, okay? So what I normally do, I purchase properties um, with liens on it before, all right? Especially like code enforcement liens. But what I will do is I will contact the county, contact the county or contact the city and ask them what is the procedure to actually negotiate these liens and get them reduced or removed, okay? Then I'll also ask, well, what's the procedure um, if I'm the new property owner, or potential property owner for this property, and I want to complete the repairs, right? Because that's really what they wanted in the first place. They just wanted the grass mode or the, the window, broken window that's in the front of the house to be fixed or whatever that deficiency is. They just wanted it fixed, right? So you tell them, hey, I have interest in purchasing this property at 123 Main Street and I realize that it has an open code enforcement lien. If I am the successful buyer and owner of this new property, can you share with me what I can do to make sure that I can get a code enforcement officer to come back out to this property and show them that I've done the work, that I've made the repair, that I've cut the grass, that I've fixed the window so that you can release that lien off of the property and now it's no longer a hindrance to you, the new tax deed owner, all right? So that's some of the strategies that I do. So I don't really shy away from properties that have liens on them, but all what I'll do is I'll contact the lien holder that government entity prior to and just see if they're just going to remove it because it's not mine it belongs to the previous property owner remember <laughs> it's not yours right so you don't have to be afraid of them or be concerned or anything like that they don't really belong to you they're only attaching to the property because that property owner has a deficiency in judgment so hey those government entities is like hey they got land they got a house they got something so they're going to hold on and put like a lien on those properties so that they could secure their interest in the debt that that person owes them right so that is a summary that was a lot <laughs> that's a summary of the types of liens um that can survive a tax deed sale but most of the times when you obtain a tax deed most of the liens are actually quieted so like mortgages don't pass through um junior liens don't pass through and when i say junior liens like um contractor liens or liens that like um save the property owner um install the solar system right or they install a new roof or like a water filtration system i don't know water softener that happens a lot here in Florida for some reason people do that <laughs> but they don't pay that contractor hmm. that contractor can put a lien on that property because they have, you know, they, they're trying to collect that debt, right? So they can put a lien on the, the, the property owner's property because they haven't paid them for the service that was, um, that was rendered onto them, right? So those are the types of liens that don't pass over on a tax deed, all right? So only government liens may survive the sale. That's it. How cool. I know, right? So now that most people are home and we're all practicing social distancing, one of the things that you can do is just look up in your local county, look up in your local county, um, when is the next tax deed auction? They're all happening like virtually. How cool is that, right? And you can participate in them and you can actually even just observe. You can observe virtually, like um, participate in the auction virtually without bidding on anything and just kind of see what it looks like and uh, get some experience with that. It's pretty cool. You got any questions about that? Hit me up. All right. So drop your comments, drop your shares or shares or likes or anything like that at the bottom of this video and i look forward to talking to you soon all right so you want to look out you can always look me up at thejackiejackson.com or you can follow me on facebook at the jackie jackson or uh youtube or uh instagram and it's all the same thing the jackie jackson.com all right talk to you guys soon bye <laughs>